So when we look at communication, I think that this is something that a lot of clients with their coaches struggle with. Mm -hmm. What do you feel as though is some of the prerequisites to create the best communication? Because you do have a little bit of a leg up that it's your husband. Yeah. So I'm going to have a, a, an intimate relationship with you. There's, it's very multifactorial. And our communication has blossomed because of all the other facets, mm -hmm. including this one, but uh, amongst all of them. So you have a little bit of a leg up for those that are listening that are like, I feel like I should be conveying or having a better relationship with my coach. What are some of the things that you feel as though are important to have the best communication with your coach? Um, well, one big part is being able to even have true and honest conversation with yourself as like, as that seems like a weird thing to bring up when I'm talking about communication with another person, you can't communicate correctly with another person if you're not even in tune with yourself, tracking different metrics and can be honest with yourself and to be able to vocalize those things that you need to. That's like the number one thing is if you're not working on communication with yourself or with other relationships, I can promise you when it comes to a coach, it's not going to be really any better. So just working on communication skills in general is going to be a huge aspect, but also knowing what that line is for what information do they need to know about my life um, and when am I just dumping information on them. So as a client, you do have a responsibility. Yes, the coach is there to guide you, but they don't know what they don't know. And I think that that's something that I've been so vocal with clients over the past year or two of saying, hey, I am not in your daily life. As assume that I know nothing because I don't know anything from your day-to-day -day life except what you've expressed to me. And so being able to say like, hey, these are where my stressors are. These are things that either I need to do about it or you just need to be aware of them. This is how my sleep is going. Like truly answering the questions and being so truthful because in the past, another thing with coaches is I would just, I didn't want them to feel like I was complaining or weak. And so I wouldn't tell them when something was like extremely difficult for me to do or I was struggling. And that's what I'm saying of like my communication in the past wasn't as good with other coaches. And that's on me of I didn't vocalize, hey, this is really weighing on me or this is really hard. I would just be like, yep, I'll get it done. And that's a great headspace and mentality to have. But at the same time, if you're running yourself into the ground and the coach doesn't know that and then they're implementing these things and you're saying you feel great then how are they supposed to make any changes off of that? So truthfully, putting yourself in the position of, hey, when I'm doing a job for someone else, I can only do it with the information that I have and then carry that forward into a coaching relationship of, hey, this person can only do what they're supposed to do if they know these things about me. Instead of thinking like, oh, I can't tell them that I'm constipated because that's TMI, or I can't tell them that my period really makes me have all of this pain and all these side effects because like that's a boy and he doesn't want to talk about menstrual cycles or whatever it may be. Like those are important things to note. And that boundary between like dumping and telling is going to be a fine line sometimes of, hey, you might need to let someone in. Like the reason my stress is high is because this is happening. Um, but instead of just saying, hey, all of this is happening and then just dumping it on that person's lap, that's also not very fair. So what are your kind of thoughts on that from a coaching perspective of what you feel like clients have a hard time communicating to you um, or that is the most helpful for clients to communicate to you? Well, I think within my experience, I work with a lot of coaches themselves. And I think that a big part is that they don't want to seem lesser than mm -hmm. in the, the concept of like how they think or what they know about a topic. And they're cautious to ask questions or to not be 100%. I think that that's a big thing is that, and, and I struggle with this when I'm checking in with my own coach, is that I have to come from a place of, I know that I want my coach to think highly of me and I want my coach to be proud of the work that I'm putting in. But like some weeks are just shit, dude. I mean, that I, the weeks just don't go as they are planned and you may not get, and this is out of the context of contest prep. Please uh, preface this in the <laughs> sense that like missing training sessions, missing food, not really gonna fly in a contest prep setting. I, as you can see, if you're watching YouTube, not in contest prep. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so um, within that, I have to I have to check myself when I'm even filling out my own check ins of being or coming from a place of vulnerability and being willing to be okay with it not looking the best necessarily because I know that for many you want to check in and it be flying colors and making you hit PRs every training session you hit your food every day you got your cardio you slept perfectly your digestion's perfect and I know. Know that many of you, when you send in your check-ins, know that that's one out of every eight check-ins, one out of every six check-ins, something along those lines. As much as we want it to happen, things happen and there's going to be things that come up. And by not addressing those issues and, and being like, no, my digestion was great. Whereas you maybe went three days without a bowel movement and you just tell the coach that it's okay. I don't know that. I, I don't know that that's that you're bending the truth a little bit on that front. And so it's very important to be okay with those factors being shared and um, all of that. So I think that that's kind of, you know, multi piece there, but yeah. um, a lot of different things. I think it's just taking responsibility. So if you know, hey, my digestion was off, but I also ate foods that I know don't sit well with me and I didn't prioritize my sleep, say that in a check-in of, hey, yes, my digestion was off. I know what it was. I'm already going to change those instead of just saying my digestion was off. And then it's, okay, another layer of saying, all right, well, how are these metrics? How are you feeling here? What have you done? The more that you can kind of reflect on your life, because again, you're the one living it, the easier it's going to be for everyone involved and the more progress you're going to see as well and the better headspace you're going to have because it doesn't feel good to lie either yeah. or to bend the truth. It doesn't feel good because then you feel like you're disappointing them, you're disappointing yourself, and then you feel like you have to make up for it the next week. And that's a really hard place to come from. So the more that you can just be transparent and take responsibility and have that honesty, you're going to see that flying forward. 